All right, so good morning to you all. Uh, today we're going to continue in AutoCAD. Uh, and today's really about starting to improve what AutoCAD looks like. And the, the problem with AutoCAD um, is that it, by default, has all the same line weights and, and nothing really pops out as an architectural drawing. And I think one of the things that happens frequently is you guys work really hard on getting some drawings together and you run out of time and you throw them up on the board and they don't have any line weights and they're okay. We're gonna try to improve from okay. Um, in the old days, back when you had to draw, like back when I was in school and they wouldn't let us use AutoCAD in studio, it was prohibited. You had to actually draw with like pens and pencils and stuff. Um, you used to, you obviously used to try to show your, your buildings using line weights. I mean, that was a critical component to how you did line weights. And so you can imagine that uh, it was a very tedious process uh, trying to make this, this happen. I remember distinctly working on a big drawing. It was about maybe six feet long, up on a wall with ink pens, trying not to make a mistake, and going from one side to the other, darkening certain sections with different ink pens. And that's why ink pens come in sets with different line weights so that you can go through and, and do this. The good news is, in AutoCAD, we don't have to worry about that. Uh, AutoCAD has line weights built in. The key is learning to use them and learning to use them well. And so I apologize in advance. I will go make another copy as soon as I'm done talking today. The copy center forgot to put the back on the, the copies, so you don't get the line weight guide. Um, nor did I somehow put it online. So I, I pulled it up from last semester. Um, but I prepped a line weight guide for you of a very simple building with a bunch of indications of how thick certain lines should be. So you'll be able to go back and uh, reference this. And it, it, you don't have to write them down right now. And I know it's sideways, so it doesn't even really help you. But we'll talk through how do you, how do you assign these line weights. And then I will give you the handout so you can reference that. I don't know why it didn't work out, but sometimes it doesn't. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up my uh, assignment floor plan from, um, I've, well, I've done it multiple semesters. So <laughs> this one's not a particularly new one. But this is the little cabin that I designed. And it, I at least needed something different so that when I'm showing it to you, it looks like a house. Um, and so I have kind of an open floor plan, living room, dining room, uh, kitchen set up here, and then a little hallway with the bathroom, and then two bedrooms, little outdoor space here. Um, and of course, I have a vision for what it looks like in elevation form as well, because I'm thinking of that at the same time. One of the struggles that you guys will have having just drawn your floor plan, is figuring out what the elevations of your building look like and what the roof looks like. So that's OK. Nothing to stress out about today. That's what next class is for. Okay. So today, we're just going to concentrate on the floor plan. And before we get too heavy into line weights and, and that sort of thing, I want to talk first about layers. And I think layers are one of the most important things that are built into these kinds of drawing programs. Obviously, we talked about layers in Photoshop. We talked about layers in InDesign. We talked about layers in Illustrator. No surprise, we're going to talk about layers in AutoCAD as well. Um, layers are absolutely critical for organizing your work. They're also something, when we start talking about AutoCAD, that does it really matter what you name your layers? No. But depending on what office you go to work for, they will have a setup for how they name their layers. And the reason that they have this kind of a setup is so that when you give your drawing to somebody else to work on, imagine for a second that you're working in an office that has more than two people in it, or, or, or more than one person in it, I guess I should say. Chances are somebody different in the office at some point is going to work on a drawing that you were working on, or you're going to work on a drawing that they were working on. And if you don't agree on what the names are going to be, it's kind of challenging. And so an office will have a set standard for this is how we name our layers. The, accepting, uh, the acceptable practice right now is that, generally speaking, if you're doing architectural work, you prefix your layers with A dash. So if you're doing the architectural stuff, it would be A dash. If you're doing uh, a different, like you're doing the mechanical systems, you might do M dash, for example. So it's going to be tied. If you're doing engineering, it would be E dash. Or civil might be C dash. Right, so it's, it's just a way of naming conventions. Again, it's, it's really hard for me to tell you this is how it's going to be, because the firm that you go to might have a different way of doing it altogether. So we are going to create some layers. Uh, right now, 
I told you guys just to concentrate on having layer 0 and the topography layer. So I've made my drawing match yours. Um, when you're drawing, as you get more familiar, you may choose to set up your layers earlier in the process rather than later in the process, but it doesn't really matter. I'm going to go, oops, sorry. I'm going to go to my layer properties, which is the button right next to the big layers block in your home ribbon here. And as I look at layer properties, this is a little bit more expansive overview of the layers and their properties. Um, so it's not the shortcut little version, it's the big version. And so right now I have layer 0, which is the default AutoCAD layer. Um, it just comes in, you can't get rid of it, it's just layer 0. And I also have a layer called topography that has the topography lines on it. I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer, which I do by clicking on this little uh, stack of layers with an orange star next to it. And when I create that, you see that it's by default called layer 1. I don't want that to be called layer 1, I'm going to call it A-Wall. For architecture, this is an architecture drawing, and this is, this is now a wall. Once I've created a wall, right, I can come across and look at the properties right now. All of the defaults are just fine. We're going to come back and view this line weight here in a little bit because that's going to be relevant. But for right now, we're not going to worry about line weight. I just have a wall. I'll go ahead and close the layer property managers. And now I need to select my walls and put them on that a wall layer. And for the ease of doing this, I'm actually going to go back to my layer properties and I'm going to change the a wall color from white I'll change it to green because I think green will show up nicely on the projector for you guys. And then I can go through it. Sometimes it's just helpful to, to choose a color just so you can see that the change is happening. So let me go ahead and I'll select the walls. And it takes a little bit of time to go through the drawing and select all the walls, so bear with me for just a second. And it doesn't know the difference at this point. We're all exactly. And so this is where sometimes it's useful if you set up the, the layers first and then you draw the walls on the wall layer so you don't have to go through and do this. But again, it doesn't really matter. We're, we're still going to get to the same place. Now I may make, might make a few mistakes as I do these selections. If I do, we'll go back and catch them a little bit later on. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm going through and I'm selecting all of the, the pieces that I believe to be the walls. And I'm almost there. Bear with me a little bit longer. Notice I am doing some selections from right to left, some selections from left to right, depending on whether I'm trying to include everything or exclude things from my selection group. So I interchangeably am going back and forth between those. Uh, looks like I've got a few more here. Okay, so I've gone through and I've selected them. Now I want to change their layer. And I'm going to change their layer once they're selected by going up to the little layer ribbon here, clicking, and then selecting a wall from the list. So I select the objects first, then I go up to my little shortcut and I change what layer uh, the objects are on. The reason that I change the color is it's pretty easy to see, oh, I missed that little section there. So that's gone. Let me double check a few more things. Oh, there's one down here. The other thing is when we get to windows, for example, depending on how you drew the windows, the dividing lines sometimes are on the wall layer, not on the window layer. Um, generally, that's for line weight purposes, so you have thicker lines dividing the windows. Uh, let me see here. Looks like I need this. In some cases, this, this window is kind of like it. Uh, you might have a whole wall of windows with just little mullions that you've cut through, in which case you wouldn't have the strong divisions in the wall. But here I've chosen a few little kind of posts that go through, so I will select those. I'm going to make sure that they go on the wall layer. A oh, couple more here. Oops. There you go. They are on the wall layer. OK, Oop, one more. There we go. So now all of those are on the wall layer, which is perfect. I can make my life a little bit easier now, and I could actually turn off the wall layer. Now, there's two different ways of turning off a layer in AutoCAD. And um, we have a, a regular on-off light bulb. And then next to it, we have something called freeze and thaw. And for your purposes, essentially, they're exactly the same. 
The, the concept here between the turning on and off a layer and freezing and thawing a layer uh, goes back to when computers weren't that powerful. And when you uh, just turn off a layer, the layer doesn't get pulled out of system memory. It's still in there. It's still active. It's just not visible. The freezing and thawing the layer actually takes it out of the computer's memory and doesn't, it, it basically takes it out of your drawing temporarily. And then it puts it back into your drawing temporarily uh, when, when you thaw it out. Our computers are all now plenty powerful enough to deal with this. So whether you use turning on and turning off or freezing and thawing really makes no difference for your purposes. In rare cases, when you get down the road and you have lots of sheets and you've got these giant drawings and whatever, maybe at that point it would matter. But for everything you're going to do in school, it makes no difference. Personally, I tend to freeze and thaw layers. It's just habit. Uh, and that was because I learned way back before computers were powerful. Um, so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and freeze the A wall layer. And when I do that, we see that all that I have left are things like the windows and the doors. So I need layers for those objects as well. So let me go back to Layer Properties. I'm going to create a new layer. This is going to be A-Door. And for ease again here, I'll change the colors. I'm going to change them all back to white in a little bit, but I'll change it to red. And then I'll go in and I'll select the doors. So I have these swinging doors. I have these closet doors, and I'll change them to be on the door layer. There we go. Now I can go back to my layer properties. I can freeze the door layer, and I can create a new layer called A-Window. You get where this is going, right? So there's window layer. Let's change the color of that one so you can see it. I'm going to select the windows. And we'll put them on the window layer. That actually needs to go away. That's an extra. So those are on the window layer. Oops, these are on the window layer too. Thank you. And realistically, these all should have been on the walls layer. So I'm going to put those on the walls layer. There we go. OK, so then there's a few other things, like there's the kitchen here. I generally put a catch-all layer for things like kitchens and furniture and stuff called fixtures. Uh, but again, that's something that I do in practice, not something that a firm would necessarily do. So depending on who you're working for for an internship, you have to be aware of what their standards are. So I'm going to do one more layer, and I'll call it A-Fixtures. Yeah, it's just it's a matter of how deep you want to go in the, in the layer structure. Uh, how much organization do you feel like you need? Um, in, in AutoCAD, I don't worry so much about going too deep in the layer structure. In Rhino, I like lots and lots of layers and sublayers. And that has more to do with how you assign materials than in AutoCAD, as long as you have something that kind of collects the fixtures, whether you have you know, your bathroom, toilet, and sink, and whatever on a different layer from the kitchen or not, chances are you're not going to turn both of them off or on independently. They're going to stay. Either you have the, the stuff in your building on, or you have the stuff off. Uh, and so I don't worry about it quite so much. So let me change that over to the fixtures layer. There we go. And let's turn the rest of these back on, so I'll thaw them all out. And now I've gone through, and I have my uh, plan kind of color-coded for what's going on. In, in the drawing here. So once, that I, once I have this set up, I'm going to change these back to being all regular white. Remember, of course, that white in AutoCAD is black when you go to print it. So it's the inverse of, of what you're seeing on the screen. It's the only color, however, that is inverted. So if you get into a gray, for example, or a white or something like that, that's different, or a very light gray. Um, that would be different than pure white. So we want all of these to be pure white. And I'm going to pick pure white not right there, which is color 255. We're going to go right here, index color 7, 
that is your regular white. And that will be what flips back to black long term. So we want to make sure we pick it there. This is actually a very, very light gray. So make sure you pick it from there. OK, so I changed all of my colors back to white. Now we get into line weights in general. And so without getting into too much detail, you should learn about line weights in 130. So my guess is at least you've covered that a little bit. Um, when we start talking about line weights, generally in an architectural drawing, uh, certainly in the plan, the thickest thing is always going to be the thing that you cut through. So in this case, a plan is cut through. The walls are all cut through at, the, at, at a plan. And so we're going to show those as thicker than other objects. And so when we start to assign them, I could, of course, go in and select a wall and come over to the layer properties and choose a specific thickness. Or I could assign all the objects that are on a particular layer to have a particular line weight, which is a far more efficient process. So if I look at that little handout, and again, I'll give it to you, I'm suggesting that the walls, let me double check what I'm suggesting here. Yep, 0.4. That was good. That was what I was guessing. And so I'm going to suggest that your walls are at 0.4. So I'll go into my layer properties again. You see we keep going back to layer properties. And I'm going to change the line weight from default on the A wall layer to be 0.4. So as we come here, we should be able to select 0.4. The line weights are in millimeters. The reason they're in millimeters is these correspond with pens. In the old days, before we had these kinds of plotters, we actually had plotters that had pens in them. And they would draw what you said to draw. And you would tell it, us, you know, draw with this pen in this particular arrangement. That's also why some firms, the, mainly the older school firms, uh, still assign line weights by color. So they have a special line weight setup where you color code your drawing in certain colors. And when you go to print, they translate the colors into line weights. It's way too complicated to worry about here. So we're just going to assign what you see is what you get. Okay? So 0.4 millimeters is going to be my suggested line weight for the walls. Once I've selected that, I'll go ahead and say OK. And you say, well, wait a minute. Nothing changed. The reason nothing changed is we haven't turned on the line weights. Pull this down a little bit more. We haven't turned on the line weights for AutoCAD just yet. If you see this icon, it looks like three little lines, some of which are thicker or thinner. You're in good shape. You can just turn it on. If you don't see that, you may have to go to the three lines at the end here on the, on the right and check the box for line weight. With that checked box for line weight, the line weight tool does show up here, in which case we can turn, choose to turn it on or turn it off. Only the thicker lines really show up in this mode. So we're, we're going to see the thick stuff, but not necessarily the thin stuff. Also, this isn't how it's actually going to print out. It's going to be a little bit thinner than this when you go to print it out. Um, it's, it's exaggerated a bit for display. There is the ability, if we right click on the line weight icon here, to go to line weight settings and adjust the display scale so that more or less of the lines are thick or thin. Uh, I generally leave it at the default. Anything below about 0.2 or 0.18 is going to look the same. And that's just the way it displays. But when it prints, it will be a lot thinner. And so it's just important to be aware of that particular fact. So now I have my plans shown up, or, or, or a little bit darker. It looks like I missed a few lines here. There we go. And so if, even just in this context, if we go from toggling where there is no lines to where there are lines, you can tell that the walls really jump out at you. And that's obviously the point. We want those to be jumping out a bit more. So now we need to assign a few more line weights for some of the other things in the building. I'll reference this drawing again. Like I said, we're going to get that back to you. Uh, windows, especially the glass, I tend to set at 0, so a very thin, sharp black line. So we'll go in to the Windows layer, Layer Properties, Window, and I'm going to set this to 0.00, .00 which is a nice thin 
black line. Doors right there. Um, in this context, I have the door a little bit thicker than the door swing. That's a lot of work to do. If, I'm happy if you just stick with 0.18 for everything. If you really want to fine tune the drawing, having the swing a little bit lighter is nice but it's not necessary. So I'll do it at 0.18. So right here under door, I'll change that to 0.18. And again, I, I told you guys I'm going to print that out so you'll have a copy of that. Uh -huh. And then my fixtures, um, I'm just going to go set it at 0.00, .00 for right now so that, that has a line weights. And my topography, I'm also going to set at 0.00, .00 for right now. The only layer that doesn't have a line weight assigned to it is layer 0, but there really shouldn't be anything on layer 0 anymore anyway. Okay, So now I have basic line weights assigned to my drawing, and these will show up a lot better when we go to print. Uh, if you want to test it, you can of course go in and do your plot. So if I went to plot, um, publish to web JPEG. Right. When you zoom in on the preview, you can see that the lines have different weights on them. You could also go as far as actually printing it, in which case you'd see even more. Okay. So a couple other problems. I have this topography line that's running through my building. Now would be a good time to trim that out. So I'm going to go ahead and use the trim command. I'll select my building and the adjacent uh, objects here. I'll hit Enter, and then we'll trim that piece off. And we'll trim that piece off. And then I can delete the rest of the object right there. So now the contour doesn't go through my building anymore. Obviously, that's something I want to fix. So at this point, I have line weights assigned. I have um, the, the contour line has been trimmed so that that feels pretty good. But sometimes we need more stuff to go with our building. And so one of the best ways of showing what's going on in a building is to actually put things into the building. So this is where we're going to put in furniture, we're going to put in kitchen cabinets, we're going to put in tables, chairs, and that sort of thing. It would be really hard if every time you had to put things in, you had to actually draw them. And so AutoCAD does have something that they call their um, Autodesk Seek that's built into AutoCAD that has a bunch of stuff in it that you can use. Personally, I think it's pretty lame. I think their drawings aren't that great. And I think you can find a lot better ones online. So instead, I'm going to suggest that we do a search on Google, for example, for AutoCAD blocks or something like that. Uh, the website that I, find, I have found that has great blocks is called First in Architecture. And it's .co.uk. There we go. And if we scroll down on this page, there's something called CAD blocks. We can click on that. And it takes us to their CAD blocks page. B a bunch of these are available to you for free, thank you, um, to this website. And you can scroll down here. So here's one, for example, sofas and couches. So if I wanted to put sofas and couches in, this is a great place to go get sofas and couches. So let me go ahead and right click and say open in a new link. There it is. You kind of get a preview of what they look like. I want to download now, but I want it to be imperial. I don't want it to be metric. Imperial means it's in feet and inches, so I want the imperial version. And so we'll go ahead and download that. As I continue browsing through this list, there may be other things that are relevant. There are trees, for example. Here's furniture, tables. That one might be pretty good. You know, sports and gym equipment. You know, there's lots of different things. You essentially drew your windows and doors, so I'm not overly worried about getting those. When we do the elevations, they might be more relevant. You might choose to, to use those. Um, so here's beds and wardrobes. That one might be pretty good. All right, and you can download these. One of the things that you will find over time is that you'll end up collecting. Now it looks like it wants me to. Uh, oh, there we go. Wrong, wrong click.
Yeah, yeah depending on depending on how the blocks are made, uh, you can end up really slowing things down when you put blocks in. It de but it, like I said, it depends. So like uh, uh, what what happens is you find blocks that you like and you end up reusing them. So I actually have on my flash drive, um, or in, in this case on my OneDrive, I have a in my resources folder. Those of you that have, are in uh, 136, you know I always go to V-Ray and I go to my materials. Notice that I do have something for AutoCAD. And inside AutoCAD, there's a, there's a blocks. So these are a bunch of blocks that I've used in the past that I find pretty good. Some of the blocks I've actually made myself. And those are ones that I use that I carefully control. This is what's in that particular block. Um, the other thing about some of these blocks, the bed one is, is one that I'll show you guys today. Uh, you can actually put things that change into blocks. So you can adjust, for example, the size of the bed or the style of the bed um, on a little drop-down menu. So I'll show you guys those in just a second. So now that I've downloaded a few of those um, files, I need to actually insert them into my drawing. And so I can start by just typing block, or I can click on this little insert ribbon where we're going to get a big ribbon about doing this. And so in, in our instance, we want to actually insert the block. So it's the first button here. Or you could just type in block. And it's going to ask you, sorry, let me click on insert instead. It's going to ask me right here for what's, where do I find this particular file. So let me go ahead and browse. And I would go into, for today's purposes, where did I put it? OK, so here's the first in architecture, dining room tables, for example. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and click on Open. When I do that, it gives me some information here. Do, where do I want to put it? Specify on screen is fine. Do I want to do any scaling or rotation of the objects? At this point, no, I don't. So I'll go ahead and say OK. And then I'll click to insert it. So here's all of the, the tables that come in. They come in as one big block or as one big chunk. At this point, I have two options. I can explode this, in which case I'll get the individual pieces, which is what I tend to do. Or I could go back to the insert, and they will be listed. All of these blocks will be listed in the little insert, and I could pick it from that list. So it's just another way of going about doing it. So in this case, I want just a simple table. We'll use that one. And we'll move this one over into my building. Just move it over here. Has anybody figured out what's fundamentally wrong with my building yet? There's no front door. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, but you'd have to get up on the deck. But it's OK. Anyway, it's kind of fun. I made the mistake. I'll fix it. I'll fix it. Right? So yeah, you can crawl through the windows. So that was that block. Now I could go in. I can delete these now. I could go find another block. So let me go to Insert. Uh, notice that when I go to Insert now, I have the list. If I want to load another file, I have to click on this More Options. And then I could browse, and I could find another set. Looks like these are the beds. And I could lo open those as well. Um, I'm going to I'm going to instead open my actual bed as a as an illustration. Well, let's let's open those anyway. So when opening files, the AutoCAD files like over in the lab and whatnot, you just always put the BW here. It's not like there's little E's in the line in the middle. Yeah, the, the association might be wrong on those computers. I don't know. The DWGs are the default AutoCAD file. They should open in AutoCAD. But the, the E might be for the viewer instead of yeah. the regular one. It's, it's a file association yeah. issue. Yeah, the icon. Anyway, so here I am. I can explode. And so for example, here's like a closet. I could put that inside of my closet if I wanted to. Looks like it's a little big. And that's one of the risks when you're, when you're working with somebody else's blocks is sometimes they, don't, they didn't do them at the correct size or the correct scale or whatever. Um, so you could take any one of these, and you could drop them in. So let me pull this one down. This one has to be rotated. 
So let me go ahead and rotate. Yeah, whatever. You guys get the idea, right? Where you're dropping those little pieces in. So I'm going to go ahead and load in the bed that I did just as an illustration. So let me go to Insert. And I'm going to go back to mine because I want to show you how this stuff works. Um, resources, AutoCAD, Blocks. And you, the reason that I want to show you this is sometimes you'll find these kinds of things happen. So in this case, there's a block of a bed. Okay? If I were to click on it, oh, how nice. It doesn't, doesn't give me the options that it's supposed to. Uh, there should be a little triangle right here that lets you switch the bed size. And I don't know, for some reason, mine's not working. Um, a lot of times, these are called dynamic blocks. They may have one. Yeah, but it should have, it should have come with that. Um, sorry. Let's see if they have another set of dynamic blocks that I can see. Sometimes their windows, yeah, here's their windows, our dynamic blocks. Um, I'll download those. All right, there we go. Mm -hmm. Let me go ahead and drop that in instead. Same thing, insert, and then more options. And this time, I'm going to browse for it was the dynamic windows. There we go. OK, so on one of these, there we go. See how we've got some other options here. So see those little triangles? That allows us to change the width of the window. So we could dynamically say, oh, it's, it's now an 8-foot window or whatever. You can type that in. We could also change the height of the slider there. Um, this little arrow flips the direction of the slider. There's also a little short sh um, drop down here that can change this to different styles. So there's a different style, a little bit thicker. You now it looks like they even have more options from there. There's that style again. We could go back to the double slider, where we have two pieces. So you get the idea. So these blocks can be very complex in terms of the flexibility of them. Um, and so you can choose to use something like this down the road. We're obviously not doing. Um, the, the elevation view just yet. Next, next class, this might be a relevant thing for you guys to play around with. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Um, the next thing that we can do to enhance this floor plan is we can actually provide some shading. And this will, I'll end up repeating myself a little bit because sometimes doing the shading is better to do it in Illustrator afterward and do a little collage work in Illustrator versus doing it in AutoCAD. Sometimes you're just stuck in AutoCAD and you want to do it all that way. So the first thing that we could do to make this stand out a little bit more is we could actually fill in the walls. And we could show it with walls filled in. Let me do a quick uh, print of where we are right now in contrast so that we can see these side by side. So the first one here, uh, let's fit to paper. Let me do a window. And let me center it. Say OK. And then let me save it. Call that example one, and I'll save it. OK, so now I'm going to fill in the walls. And this way, we'll be able to see it separately. When we fill in walls, we're going to use something called a hatch. 
And what a hatch is, is it's a set of repetitive patterns or lines, or in the case of fill, solid, uh, that fill in certain regions of your drawing. And AutoCAD has the ability to do this really easily. So all it takes is the hatch command. So we type in hatch. Uh, I believe hatch is available right here under the draw. There's a hatch. You will probably hear me refer to B hatch. The old AutoCAD used to use B hatch. It will still get you to the same place, but you don't have to worry about it. It's just hatch. So I'll type hatch. And the ribbon that appears here is the hatch creation ribbon. And so as we look at this, we have first off the ability to choose patterns. And so we can start with solid, or we can run through a bunch of patterns, some of which are representative of materials that we might be cutting through. So for example, if we had a concrete wall, we could use the concrete hatch to fill it in. Um, they can end up being a little bit cartoonish, but sometimes they're relevant. Um, I tend to stick to simple ones, simple parallel lines, fills, uh, they work really nicely. As we scroll down here, you can see that there's a bunch of options that are available to you. Um, we're going to start with just solid hatch. So I'll pick solid. We do have some ability to change some basic settings. My hatch is solid, so there's not much that can be done to it. And you notice that what my command line is asking for is to pick an internal point. So basically what it means is click inside of some wall or some line. And you can actually see that it gives you a little dynamic preview. These computers are fast enough to give you that dynamic preview. Sometimes if you're working at home, you won't get that dynamic preview. Okay? So I'll go ahead and click inside this wall. Oops. Come on. There we go. And it will fill in that particular section of wall. As I zoom in, I can fill in these pieces as well as we go across. And we'll work our way through the building. Yep. I don't have to. I can change it. It's just habit to select it first. Almost done. The more complicated your objects are, the harder this picking will be. Some cases you will actually have to do a little work around, and I'll show you that in a second. So when I'm done, I go ahead and hit Enter, and now I've essentially filled in all of the walls so that they stand out a little bit more. So if I went back to plot, you guys don't have to do this plotting. I want to do this as a comparison. I'm going to do the same previous plot. Everything's the same. I'll say OK. And this will be example two. And let me go ahead and open up those. Can't type. All right, let me open up those two examples so that you guys can see them here. All right, so there's the first example. Obviously, the lines jump out at you because they're the darkest lines versus the other lines being a little bit thinner. And you can see now that I have different line weights associated. So some are thicker, some are thinner. I could actually zoom in a little bit more, and you can see that there's even more contrast. This is a JPEG, not a DWG or a, a PDF, so the lines end up getting a little bit jagged like that. That's to be expected for the JPEG. You guys, that'll clean up later on. You don't have to worry about that so much. But if I compare that, to this, if you stood at the back of the room, you know, 50 feet away, and looked at this, this would read a lot stronger than the one without the fills. Do you guys see how that works? It's also really clear where the windows are versus where the windows are not in something like this. To me, this black on white can be a little bit overpowering on a drawing. So sometimes you might want to change the color of the hatch to not be black, but to instead be kind of a dark gray. So if I select, oops. If I select the hatch, because I did it all at once, it's the whole hatch, I can actually go and change the color of that hatch. Let me go back to my home ribbon. I'll come over to my properties, and I'll look here in their color. And instead of 
picking white, I'm going to choose maybe a dark gray. And so you can kind of play around with, you could also go to more colors, for example, and maybe something like this, a 250, a 251, something like that might not be bad. I'll pick 251 there, and I'll say OK. And they'll show up as gray here. It's really hard to look at grays against the black background, because ultimately they're going to appear darker than they are because it's reversed. And we're looking at it black on white, or white on black instead of black on white. So really, the only way of seeing it is to do the print, or we'll ultimately do paper space, in which case you can see what's happening. Uh, so let me go ahead and go to plot. Yeah, you want to do the hatch later on. Well, what happens if you stick it in halfway through, you'll end up changing it, or you'll move a wall, and it gets messy. So it's easier to, this is kind of touch up. This is make it look better at the end. So same, same print settings here. We'll call this example three. There we go. Uh, let me open it up in Photoshop. And we can see that. So there's another option where they're not quite so strong. And so as we compare these, there's the first one. Make sure it fits there. There's the second one. And there's the third one. So they're, they're subtly different. And so it depends a little bit on, on the look you're going for. We could change that yet again and make it even lighter and find some happy medium where this feels like it's really the right option. So let me go back to home. I'm going to go back to my colors, and maybe I'll do a lighter color. Same thing for contrast here. Call this example four. And let me open that file. So it's a little bit lighter than that version. So there's some version that feels right. And so you have to play around with what feels right for you. Okay? So the next piece is sometimes we want to indicate that there's some flooring or something happening in the, in the rooms themselves. And so we can use hatch to do that uh, as well. So I'll go in and I'll pick my hatch command again. And this time I want it to apply inside the room. Now, notice down here that when I, when I move my cursor inside, it fills in the whole thing. The reason that it's filling in the whole thing, there you go, except for the sink, is because I haven't closed off that edge of the cabinet there. So it's looking for enclosed objects. So before I do the hatch, I need to tidy that up and clean that off. Now if I go back to the hatch command and I hover over it, okay good, it's not showing it. Sometimes, again depending on how blocks are created, you can end up where they just don't fill in right. Uh, maybe it fills in the, the, the part of the table that you didn't want it filled in. It's kind of a touchy subject. It depends on who created the blocks and whether there's little gaps in their blocks or not. And so uh, that's the risk that you have using blocks. The other thing that happens is see how when I fill this, it's going into all of these doorways? Well, maybe I want there to be a different material inside the bathroom, for example, than the rest of the house. If that was the case, I need some kind of a border that divides the bathroom from the outside to the inside. And so that's fine. I could take a line and I could draw you know, a line there, for example. And now when I did the hatch, okay, it wouldn't go inside the door. That's good. And I could do this separate from. The problem here is I don't want that line to show up ultimately. I just want it to be a way of dividing the space. So I'm going to use one other type of layer. I'm going to go to Layer Properties. I'll create one more layer. And I call this layer No Print. And that's, again, something that I do, not something that's specific to a firm, though the technique is still the same. So I'll call it No Print. And I'll come all the way over here under Plot. And at the very end, you see that little printer icon? If I click it, I'll get a little red circle next to it. And that means it will not print. It won't show up in my final drawing. The other thing is I tend to make my no print layer green. I have no idea why, but that's just habit. And so when I look at my drawing and I see green, it's like, OK, that doesn't print. It's just a personal thing. So there it is. I have my no print layer. It's green. I'll change this object to be on the no print layer. I had another one here. 
and I'll change that to be on the no print layer as well. Let me add two more for these bedrooms. And we'll put those on that no print layer. Perfect. So then I'll go back and I'll do the hatch. So once again, I'm going to type hatch or click the hatch tool. And I'm going to fill this particular region. Now, I didn't really want that to be all solid black. Like that would not look good. So let me finish it. But I'm going to select it. And I'm going to go back in and make some changes. So instead of solid, maybe I want it to be parallel lines. So I'll click on this, this next option here for parallel lines, and it still looks solid. Well, the problem here is that, yes, it does have parallel lines, but they're just too close together. So I need to change the scale of that hatch. So right now, the scale is at 1.00. So let's try making the scale 10.00 and see what happens. OK, they're a little further apart, but they're still a little dense. So maybe let's try 20. OK, a little bit better. Let's try 40. OK, that seems pretty reasonable. Maybe it's not cool. Maybe it's a little too big. We could go back to 30. You have to find whatever the happy medium is. OK, maybe it's 35. I don't know. Now, I don't really want diagonal flooring in my building. It's not the 70s. I don't feel like that anymore. I want nice, nice parallel lines here. So I'm going to change the angle here. It's set at 0. If I change this angle to be 45, for example, all of my lines will switch to be vertical. If I change this to be negative 45, oh, I can obviously I can drag it. Will it let me do negatives? Yep, negative 45. It's also 315, depending on which way you look at it. It's easier for me to say negative 45. And now my my uh, planks are going horizontally, which is my idea. Okay, so I finished that. Perfect. I might want to go in and hatch the outside. So this is the patio, for example. So once again, I'll go back to hatch. It's going to be this plus that plus that. And I don't want it to be the parallel lines anymore. I want it to be little bricks. The scale here is reasonable already. I'd like them to be a little bit bigger. So maybe I'll do 1.5 so they're a little bit bigger. They're like big patio tiles or something. So there it is. And I'll hit Enter. These lines will show up a little bit too dark right now. So number one, they're on the layer 0. And number two, they don't have a line weight assigned to them. So I need to adjust that as well. I can change these to be on a different layer. And so in this case, maybe I'll click a new layer. And I'll call A-hatch. I'll change the line weight to be 0.00. But on this, I'm also going to change the color from white to being gray. So I'll pick the 251 gray. I don't want it to be overpowering. Thin light lines for something like this. Then I'll take this, and I'll take this, and we'll put them. Actually, before I do that, let me do a print just so you can see the, the comparison here. Example 5. And then let's put these onto my hatch layer. And let's print one more time. You guys do not have to do increments like this. You just do the final version, and that's all you print. I'm just doing this as a way of illustrating the various options here. So let me open those last two. So there it is with the black lines. And you see that the black lines, let's see, zoom in just a little bit. The black lines compete with everything else that's going on. They compete with the counters. They compete with the table. They're a little too strong. If we jump over to the next option here, where they're a little bit lighter, they don't compete as much. The table sticks out against the, back, the, the gray of the lines. Maybe these needs to be even lighter. And again, this is where you have to do some trial and error. If I went back, I could go to my layer properties. I could take the hatch. I could say, no, let's drop the color down even more. And then we'll, we'll print again, and you guys can see it. The one thing to be aware of, though, is that yes, it's, it's good to double check what, uh, what it looks like 
in these digital versions. But when you go to actually print it, that also changes things. It depends a lot on the printer, the ink that's used, and the paper that's used. So it's not a bad idea just to do some test prints to see do the lines look the way you want them to look in the first place. So I'm back here. Let me save this one more time. Say example seven. Go. Let me open example seven. So now those show up even less against the rest of these. I've seen it successfully done where instead of having a hatch, people have actually subtly shaded the floor with like a 10% gray. That can work as well. And this starts to get into more what's the style that you're looking for. Um, I tend to like these, but it's up to you. Let me try hatching this here because I'm hoping, I never would say that, I'm hoping that it doesn't work. Well, in this case, it does work around the beds. I was looking for one where it didn't quite work. Um, and you'd either have to go into the bed itself and, and fix it, or you'd have to create a polyline around it or something. Um, but if you run into that problem, I'll, I'll work through it with you uh, as necessary. Okay? So we've gotten through hatches, we've done line weights. When you're done today, you're going to post your finished work. The idea is that you should be fairly well resolved in your floor plan. Next class, we're going to start drawing the elevation views. If you haven't figured out what your floor plan is by next class, that's going to be a problem because it's really hard to draw the elevation views if you don't have the floor plan. Okay? So start wrapping up that floor plan. You have the remainder of the day to do floor plan work, to draw the rest of the floor plan, but to also assign line weights and try to make it look much more presentable as an AutoCAD drawing. Remember that we're going to take this into Illustrator ultimately and do some tweaking there as well. So there may be different strategies. For today, we'll get it as, as looking as good as possible straight out of AutoCAD. Yeah? No, you don't have to actually print it out. You're just going to do the JPEG and post it online. Um, next class, we're going to do elevations, and then we'll move into paper space, which is a really big concept in AutoCAD that will help this whole printing process. Okay? Exactly. Finish your floor plan and then do what I did. <laughs>